Antifreeze. The Gatorade that my Honda drinks so that it doesn't catch a cold. I'm not a car guy. But it's not just vehicles that require antifreeze to function properly. Some animals, especially fish and arthropods, can survive below freezing temperatures thanks to naturally occurring antifreeze in their body. This gives some arthropods the ability to survive in regions with harsh winters, and it gives some fish the ability to live in polar marine habitats. Two of those fish are the Greenland shark and the Pacific sleeper shark, both members of the family Somniosidae. But what is a sleeper shark? How does organic antifreeze work? And are Greenland sharks as delicious as they look? We'll find the answer to all those questions and more as we continue exploring the Tree of Life. If you haven't seen my 2019 video highlighting the Greenland shark, a well-rested young man with a better hairline and less back pain talks about longevity in Greenland sharks. The video highlights the PhD project of Julius Nielsen, who used a method called eye-lens radiocarbon dating to discover that Greenland sharks can live to be between 272 and 512 years old, making them the longest-lived vertebrate animal known to science. If you'd like to learn more about that, I'll leave a link to the video up there and down here. But for today, Let's hop in our dry suits and jump into the Arctic Ocean for a quick lesson in cold water survival tactics. Warm-blooded, or endothermic animals like seals, porpoises, and penguins survive freezing temperatures by producing their own body heat, just like all mammals and birds can. Polar animals also prevent heat from escaping their bodies by insulating themselves with a thick layer of blubber. Not only is blubber functional, it also results in these animals being extra cute and chubby. Sharks, like all fish, are cold-blooded or ectothermic, meaning that they can't produce or retain their own body heat. They also don't have blubber. Instead, they rely on heat sources within their environment to keep their metabolism working. Exceptions to this rule can be seen in a few specialized fish, like tuna, and a handful of sharks, like great whites and their close relatives. These fish have a complex circulatory system that uses something called counter-current heat exchange, redirecting heat generated by their swimming muscles to warm up their core. This allows them to maintain a higher internal temperature than the surrounding water. But counter-current heat exchange can only take a shark so far. Great whites don't venture into Arctic waters, but Greenland and Pacific sleeper sharks do, and they do so without using counter-current heat exchange. Sleeper sharks get their name from their lazy, sleepy swimming habits. The Greenland shark is often referred to as the slowest fish in the ocean. That record is up for debate, but the point is that blood warmed by muscle movement won't quite do the trick. This is where the antifreeze comes in. And luckily, this antifreeze uses chemical compounds that already occur naturally in sharks. All sharks use urea and trimethylamine oxide, TMAO, to maintain osmoregulation, balancing the salinity levels within their body with that of their marine environment. I know that was kind of boring, but osmoregulation is what prevents your cells from literally exploding, so. The Greenland and Pacific sleeper shark produce and store higher concentrations of urea and TMAO than other sharks. At such high concentrations, these compounds prevent the formation of ice crystals that would otherwise break down cell walls, resulting in tissue damage, organ failure, and death. Now you might be thinking, hold on Jason, you handsome devil. What about all the sharks that live in the deep sea? Don't they get extremely cold too? Yes, and usually they're colder than the water's surface. But in polar regions, the surface water is actually colder than the ocean floor. This means that the Greenland and Pacific Sleeper are the most cold-tolerant sharks on the planet, regardless of depth. Additionally, high concentrations of urea and TMAO can be toxic when ingested, so you probably shouldn't eat a Greenland shark. Unless... No, no, I'm just kidding. Unless. In Iceland, the national dish is haukarl, or fermented shark. 
It's made by first compressing slabs of Greenland shark meat to expel excess fluid, mostly ammonia. The meat is left to ferment for 6 to 12 weeks before being hung up to dry for an additional 4 to 5 months. The crusty outer layer is then removed, and dinner is served. Haukartl is reported to have a rubbery texture and a flavor reminiscent of stinky cheese and ammonia. Imagine Limburger soaked in a gas station urinal. Oh, how the Vikings have fallen. I'm 25% Swedish. I'm allowed to dunk on Iceland every now and again. The ethicality and sustainability of Haukartl production is still a matter of debate, but no solid conclusions can be drawn from the currently available data since Greenland shark population size is still a mystery. In fact, the entire family Somniosidae, which includes 20 currently recognized species, are still very understudied. As I've said, and will continue to say, we cannot conserve that which we do not understand. And speaking of misunderstandings, have you ever taken a bite out of a submarine because you thought it was a whale? Me either, but this guy has. With the teeth of a demon and a very fashionable choker necklace, meet the cookie cutter shark, who we'll get to know next week when we explore the family Dalatiidae, the kite fin sharks. Would you try fermented Greenland shark? Let me know in the comments, and be honest, I won't be mad. Also, pretty please like and share this video, and follow me on Instagram to see pictures of mostly just my pet pigeon. Until next time. Stay curious, stay connected, and never stop evolving.